Um, I'm not trying to prove it physically, I'm trying to prove it. I don't care what you want to prove mentally. Prove it physically. On the, if you're gonna claim on we the can have gas pressure, dynamics. shut up! If you're gonna claim we can have gas pressure without a container, you're damn well gonna be showing it. Because it's a violation of the second law of thermodynamics. I believe it is an experiment. I don't care about your belief, be happy to you bloody religious zealot. I don't care what you believe. I couldn't give a crap about your belief. Go away to some fundy globe head site so you can be a fundy elsewhere. Hello, Salvador. I just came on because I, I saw the um Jaronism video that he posted on the gas pressure thing, and I thought I you're deserving of an explanation. Um uh, I study science, so I, I do physics. Um it's not my major, I major in chemistry, but I've done physics. Well, the, the thing is with the um, vacuum of space is that truly there is no real thing as a perfect vacuum. I'm sure we're all in agreement there. That you, you're quite quiet. Like, Can you just say that once more? Just, I'm not trying to interrupt. <clears throat> I just can't hear you very well. Oh, uh, I'll get closer to the microphone. Um, there's no real true thing as a perfect vacuum, as in there's no like infinitely spa spacious area of space there's always some molecule of some sort somewhere okay. along the way yeah have you have you been there have you been to space to to test that out for yourself N no it's just that it's um uh inevitability of physics if if you want me to um, start from somewhere else. I'm okay with that. No, no, that's okay. Well, I, my, my understanding from the current heliocentric priests is that it's ten to the minus seventeen tor. Yeah, so well, it's that's, it's that's not quite like a big, quite a big differential vacuum. in pressure, be... though. Wouldn't you agree? From what we have here, that's quite a big difference. Ah, uh, yes, that is a very big difference. Um, the the thing that you have to recognize about that is that most of the breathable atmosphere on our earth is within um 8000 meters which 8 kilometers i don't know what that is in empirical me measurements but like not a lot of um space yeah hey, what's your point though um the the gas that is essentially adhering to the earth's surface is pulled in by gravity and that's how it violate or seemingly violates the second law of third thermodynamics which you're citing in the that's not the case do you, show me a, do you want to show me a demonstration of that please um well just theoretically in a thought no 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 no. no no did, did you just substitute the word demonstration for theoretically no can you show me a demonstration of the claim that we have gravity maintaining gas pressure without a container. Can you demonstrate that? Not theoretically, a demonstration of it. Um, well, in order to do that, you would need a sufficiently massive object, which as a fairly basic society, we're incapable of pro producing that. So you how so massive? No, no demonstration. Hey, hey, Travis, how are you doing? How massive? Maybe the size of Earth, would that be about how massive you'd need? Pardon? approximately how big maybe the size of earth that sort of size mm, yeah yeah probably i think the moon has a uh, hold on sorry probably the size of earth so this is essentially you using your religious belief about what earth does as the proof um no i'm well you've just I said we just... need a, an object the size of earth and then you're going to tell me theoretically what that earth-sized <laughs> object would do Right. In, or, in order to demonstrate it physically, that's what you would need. But I'm capable of proving it. So you can't demonstrate it beyond your religious assertion of what Earth does. That's my point. So you're saying theoretically or otherwise, I would need something the size of Earth. But you're going to tell me what Earth does and use your theoretical example of an experiment you can't perform that you need an Earth-sized object to do it. So essentially, this is circular reasoning with your religious belief about what Earth does. Well... Let's let's go back to the second law of third dynamics. No, Entry just say yes. No, just concede. You've just used circular reasoning. Don't move on. I'll just keep you here indefinitely till you say yes. What I'm about to do is assert my In religious sense, belief yeah. I, about I what do Earth does. As that the, is now you're talking over me. Reason. Stop talking over me. 
Sorry. You've just asserted your religious belief about what Earth does, and the proof for it is to take something about the size of Earth to demonstrate it, which you can't do. So essentially using your own religious belief about what Earth in space does as the proof of what Earth in space does. Circular reasoning. I want you to concede that is what you've just done. Yes, but that is not what I wanted to... I don't care what you want to do. That's what you've done. And I need you to concede that that's not acceptable standards of evidence to use a bloody religious belief. Yes, that that is that is not what I was trying to prove. Though. I don't care what you were trying to do. That's what you did. Are you deaf? Be because of you demanded that I demonstrate it physically. Oh, but I'm so not should we just believe you? Physically. Sorry, I demanded that we get proof of this. Oh, my bad. Sorry, should we just believe you, or should we believe the priest you'll refer to? So, is physical evidence not a standard that we should adhere to here? Um, I'm not trying to prove it physically, I'm trying to prove it... I don't care what you want to prove mentally. Prove it physically. On the, if you're going to claim we can have gas pressure... Shut up! If you're going to claim we can have gas pressure without a container, you're damn well going to be showing it. Because it's a violation of the second law of thermodynamics. So either show it, what is, or go and have your musings about what it might do theoretically dynamics. elsewhere. What is the second law of thermodynamics? Why are you asking me a question? Can you demonstrate gravity maintaining gas pressure without a container? Because that is your claim. The second law of th thermodynamics is that higher energy states will move to lower energy states. You following me at the car moment? Yes. Do I follow you? I understand this implicitly. The gas yes, pressure yes. that we have Unless is an energy. It is a a shut up! By a You've force. asked me, I'm telling you. Why do you keep talking over me? I'm continuing my point. I'm sorry. Your point? Your point defies the second law of thermodynamics. A high energy state would be gas with pressure. Molecules with energy going into somewhere with no energy. A low pressure state. So that's entropy, isn't it? What? And the gas fills the space. Contrary to what your religious belief about Earth is. So you don't make any points. You've only asserted your religious faith about what Earth does. What are you actually going to provide as physical evidence? None? You've only got theory? So you've got nothing then? Oh no! The, the, the thing I'm trying to say is that it's unless acted upon by a force. Yes? Yeah, what are you going to assert again? Circle jerkers for the second time and assert there's a force of gravity? That the force that is being exerted upon is gravity. Yeah, so you are going to circle jerkers for the second time. So, demonstrate no. gravity holding gas pressure without a container. That's not the demonstration I'm trying to prove. I don't I'm care trying what you're prove. trying to do. You've just asserted that gravity's the answer. And gravity is the magic band-aid, as always, that can maintain gas pressure without a container in this instance. So, show it. Gravity is a ubiquitous force. It is an attraction between any... No, it's not. It's just bullshit. Made up by idiots who claim, with mathematics, that we have a force we never see. There is no attraction between masses. We never see this ever. It is not demonstrable. You're just making it up. It's based on your religious faith. If you want to claim um, gravity, provide me the scientific evidence for it. Well, for example... Oh, damn. The Cavendish experiment is... That's not an experiment. The the, it is not an experiment. So straight away you failed... That's not an experiment. Um, it does not have an independent and a dependent variable. The observation of a phenomena is not an observation of a phenomena. It is conjured within the apparatus. That would be the last, well, second to last step in the scientific method. Not the first. It's not an experiment. It's a pseudoscience circus sideshow. Don't claim things that are not scientific are scientific. Because it's not. Well, let me correct you on that. The independent variable is the presence of the spheres or not that so, is the independent let me get it right as a logical syllogism you're saying that the objects in close proximity is the cause so not gravity then it's the mass itself mass attracts sorry mass, yes so you're saying the cause is mass yes so if mass then mass attracts mass no well that's what you've just said the phenomena is mass attracts mass. You're saying the independent variable is mass. So your formulated hypothesis is if mass, then mass attracts mass. Number one.
That's not a hypothesis. Number two, Cavendish is not an experiment. Number three, we never, ever, ever observe mass attracting mass. So this is nonsense. And I'll say it again, not an experiment, not proof of gravity, and absolutely definitely not a demonstration of gravity maintaining gas pressure without a container, which is what you're attempting to do with this nonsense. Well, there you have it. I mean, who would have thought in a million years that somebody who believes they live on a spinning ball would get decimated in a debate with a flat earther? Uh, actually, it makes perfect sense when you realize that most people have no clue why they live on a spinning ball. It's literally blind faith. Um, guys, what you just saw there is a daily occurrence over on the Nathan Oakley 1980 YouTube channel. Okay, He has a public link for daily debates. Anyone can click on that link. Anybody can join and express their views on what they think the shape of the earth is. And um, what you just heard is, is not a rare occurrence. So if you want to see daily destruction, if, if, you're, if you're on the fence in this globe versus flat debate and you want to dig down and see what are the best debates people have to offer, what are the best arguments people have to offer, click the link down there and you'll be able to watch the rest of this debate. And you'll be able to just, you know, just you know, see what happens. See, see what the best the globe has to offer is. And so again, guys, click the link below and subscribe to that channel. And also be sure to watch the rest of this devastating destruction. Laters. I travel a lot and I fly a lot and I can see the curvature okay. when I fly. Okay, so 35,000 feet, you can see it, right? That's what you're saying? Generally speaking, I can see a slight curve to it, yeah. Okay, so Neil deGrasse Tyson says that you can't see it at that altitude, so I really want This really doesn't matter. We, I probably we have satellites. Ah. Ah. <laughs> that stuff is flat. That stuff is flat. Don't get me started.